this is precisely one of those occasions where I'm reading the pattern and going, what the heck? I don't understand it. What is happening? Such a simple design. Why is it written like this? Hi, my name is Claire and I really like to knit. Today, I want to talk to you about my latest project. It is Out of the Divine Book by ha Kim Hargraves. She is a designer for Rowan and she's published many books, which I have here. I really like her simple and elegant designs. Um, it's just very classic and understated. And Andrea from Fruity Knitting knits a lot of her things, so, and I really like Fruity Knitting. So I picked up the Divine Book because everything here is white, and I love white. So the first project I was going to start trying was the Lyra cardigan. It's a very simple mohair cardigan. Um, it looks like a really easy design, and it looks like something I will wear all the time. So I thought, yeah, let's do this one. However, as soon as I open it to the pattern, what, what the heck is going on here? I started reading it, and I was just feeling like I need to pull my hair out. I know this is the traditional way all Rowan patterns are written, but the way it's written, it just it was driving me crazy. It didn't make sense. It was unnecessarily complicated, and it's just not intuitive. So I thought I'll take the opportunity to take this and create one of my spreadsheets and take you along to show you how I do it. I'm also going to create a very simple schematic to show you what the finished piece look like without all of this complicated words and numbers. In. So if you want to see how I create my spreadsheet in schematics, please follow along. The yarn I'm using for this project is the Roman Cashmere Haze. I think the colour, it doesn't say here, I'm pretty sure it's called Polar Night. It is a very dark grey, almost black. My mum has used it before and it is a beautiful piece that she wears all the time. And I talk about Cashmere Haze all the time because it's one of my favourite yarns. It's 40% alpaca, 30% cashmere, 30% silk. So it's a perfect um, mohair alternative and it's just not scratchy at all and so lightweight and so luxurious. Um, I think it must be being dis discontinued because this was half price on wool warehouse a few months ago, late last year. So I stocked up and I bought heaps of them in a few different colors. I've already created the left front piece last night. It's a 15 stitch gauge so super quick to knit up and um, yeah, it's pretty small. I mean, yeah, I think once it's finished, it'll be a little bit bigger, but it looks like it's gonna have some negative ease. It is just a left front piece. That's the armhole, that's the front neckline, which tapers, and then a bit of ribbing. There will also be a picked up neckline here, so it will be quite a bit bigger. I've also started my back piece. But I thought before I continue, I'm going to show you how I created a spreadsheet out of this and a schematic because if I just follow the pattern as it is written I will be pulling my hair out going crazy also I found an error in the pattern so good thing I charted it all out beforehand because otherwise this back piece in the front is not going to match so let's get started um, I've already done the back panel which was quite simple and I had done the left front previously so but I thought I'll do it again and show you how I did it uh, it is a bottom-up design, that's why I've reversed order to last time. One starts from the bottom, row numbers goes up, so first row, this column is row numbers. Then we've got our left front, right from right sleeve, back, left sleeve, right front, etc. If you were doing a top-down sweater, you just reverse everything, row numbers starts from the top, and the left you move to the other side, to the right. Yeah, hope that makes sense. Um, with the back, I make, so I'm making a small which is the first number in the bracket there. I'll show you, I cast it on 82, I did six centimeters of rib, yep, and then I reduced it down to 62 stitches, which was here, yes, reduced it down to 62, and then the first row, we had to reduce it down to 61, which is here, so that was row one. We work three rows, one, two, three, so row four is when we start increasing both sides. It says to K3, make one, K2 last three stitches, make one K3. So that means there's a three stitch border on each side before we do the make one. And so that's how I indicated it. Three stitches before I make one. Here, 
On the other side, let's also make one and have the three stitches, which makes it 63. I then work nine rows, then repeat the increase again. So on row 15, I repeated it again. Yep. Work 11 rows and start shaping armholes. So 11th row will be 27. That's when I started shaping the armholes. That's easy. I also put in the armhole here. So I won't go through it now because we're going to do the left front together. Uh, what I wanted to point out is armhole here starts on 27, row 27. And for my left front, it starts on 29 and I can't figure it out. So maybe let's go through it together and you can help me figure out why. So left front, we cast on 43 stitches, I'm putting 43. We do double rib for six centimeters. Um, double rib, this is double rib. While holding on double, uh, we K2, P2, K2, which is a two by two rib, starting with a K2. So I have double rib, six centimeters, starting with a K2. That's what I did and ending with a K3. So we work that for six centimeters. I'm just highlighting it as I go because another frustration I've found is there are no row numbers in any of these. So if I'm knitting, I come back to so where am I up to again and I have to try and find my place. So I'm just highlighting as I go as I'm typing. Um, so the next row, we decrease it down to 33 stitches by reduce, it's decreasing about every third row. Every third stitch, we make two, uh, K2 together. Um, so that makes it 33 stitches and from here it's a six millimeter needle. So row one we start with a six millimeter needle which is just the after rib the normal stocking stitch bit. Okay let's go so this part is row one we finish with 32 stitch because we decreased one so what I do is decrease one stitch in the center stitch. Cool clear. Work three rows Ending with the wrong side row, so we've got one, two, three. Now we're doing row five. Next row is an increase. K3 make one, K2 end, 33 stitches. So it's going to be 33 stitches. We're going to increase one with a three stitch gap. So three stitches, and then we do it increase one. Easy. That one is done. Now work five rows. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Here, work five rows. Now we're going to shape the front slope. Shape the front slope is K to last five stitches, K2 together to the back, and K3. Um, so we decrease one, which will make a 32. So here, there's gonna be a three stitch border, and we decrease one, so that's the front slope. We're decreasing one on the front sloping side. And I've got a little hint here, it's a K2 together to the back loop. Cool. Working all front slope decreases set by the last row and sizing increases as set by the previous increase. That's clear, continue as follows. This is where it gets tricky. Decrease one stitch at the front slope edge of fourth and three follow fourth rows. I really don't like how British patterns run like that because it's bloody confusing. So that means you decrease it every fourth row this time, plus three more times, also every fourth row. So that's decrease four times every fourth row. Why can't you just say that? Decrease four times four. Okay, so let's go one, two, three. I've got to copy this. Go one, two, three, four. Easy. They should have just said this. And at the same time, Increase one stitch at the beginning of fourth row. At the beginning of fourth row. Okay, so we started here. So at the beginning of fourth row will be this one. So we'll copy that one over. Cool. Done. And then work one row. Work one row ending with the wrong side row. Yeah. So that means it's here. Arm um, host shaping starts here. So work one row and then the next row we start arm shaping. But you can see that starts on the row 29 and that starts on the row 27. That doesn't make any sense. They should always start at the same place. Now I have also mapped it out using the smaller size and the smaller size works. It matches. But with 
sorry, with the extra small size, it works, but with small, it doesn't work. So yeah, it's making me quite annoyed. It's either errata or I'm reading this wrong. Anyway, so I have already made the front left piece. It's such a loose gauge, so it didn't take very long. Um, but I quite like this length, um, hold to hem. So I'm going to shuffle this whole bit up two rows to make the back panel match the front panels because I will not be happy with the back panel having a smaller two row difference in the hem because two rows is almost one centimeters. <sighs> okay, so yeah, look at how simple this is and look at how complicated this is. It's just so convoluted. Yeah, that's, that's a gripe that I will have to live with. Now, to shape the armhole, we cast off three stitches. No, no, cast off four stitches. And decrease one zero times. Cool. I can live with that. Oh, I forgot to do this. So if we do this, 32, because we're plus one and minus one at the same time, so that's still a 32 stitch count. 31, 30... 29, 29, take my four, it's 25. Perfect. Um, shape armhole. Okay, work around one row. Yep, work one row. Decrease one stitch at armhole edge of next one rows. Then on every following two alternate rows. So I'm going to say that's one times, two times, three times. At the same time, decrease one stitch at front slope edge of next and one following fourth rows. Okay, next is this one, and then following fourth row is this one. And it's supposed to be 20. Let's see if it is 20. So 25 minus 2 is 27. Got 26. No, I'm sorry. What am I doing? 23, 22, yes, that is 20. Okay, so that's the only way I can make it work. That one's done. Decrease one stitch at front slope edge only on fourth and five following fourth rows and on zero six rows. So five following six rows, five following fourth rows plus the one they just said, so that's six more times. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. Cool. Six times. And that will make it 14 stitches. So 20 minus six is 14. That's all good. Continue straight until left front matches back to start of shoulder shaping. Matches back to start of shoulder shaping. That's not good English. Matches back to start of, I think it says, matches the back panel and where the shoulder shaping starts. And with the wrong side row, so now we start shaping the shoulder. We cast off five and following alternate rows. So we cast off another five. Work one and then cast off four. Yep, and that will make it zero. It'll be nine, four, zero. Okay, that makes sense. So this is how I have mapped it out. Kind of makes sense, right? This is pretty simple. And just the way they've written it, it makes me want to pull my hair out. It is so hard to follow, especially if you're knitting, you come back and you're like, where am I? Because the writing is so small. There's so many numbers. And there are too many at the same time. So unless you map it out, if someone just reading it line by line, they'd be like, oh crap, I've just done this like 50 rows and I didn't read at the same time. Anyway, this is my gripe. I will also show you how I do it another way. So I've just drawn it up here in your full schematic um, using the chart that I just created. Uh, so you start with 43 stitches, cut on 43 stitches, two by two rib with a three millimeter needle for six centimeters. The last one, last row here, I would decrease it to 33 stitches. Um, and usually I would just go back to my book to look at how I decrease it. And then you can see here, row one, I'm gonna decrease in the middle to 32 stitches. 
And then for all of the shaping, it is just right here. I will be able to um, count at the same time rather than looking at it row by row. Because when I'm on the left hand side, I'll be like, oh, it's every four rows, I will do this. On this side, oh, it's every 15 rows, I will do this. So here you can see on row five, I'm going to plus one. And then on row 15, I'm going to also plus a stitch. Row five and row 15. And that's it on that side until the arm hop. Whereas on the front side, sorry, on the um, opening side, you will see that from row 11, I start doing my decreases. I decrease one stitch every four rows, 13 times in total. I give it a quick count. It is just simply every four rows, 13 times in total. How simple is that? And the book made it sound so complicated. Do this at the same time, do that, blah, blah, blah. That's all it is. Front sloping is take one stitch away every four rows times 13 times. At the same time, when I'm here, I will know after I've done 14 rows, I will start casting off for the armhole, which is cast off four stitches. And in the following row, I'll be casting off one stitch every two rows times three times. And that's it. Easy. Once that's done, I will start casting off and sloping the shoulders, which is cast off five, cast off five, cast off four. Anyway, this is how I like to draw my patterns out. For me, it is really simple and clear when I look at this. This is a ridiculously simple pattern. Um, it's a very classic and simple design. And mm, yes, the way it's written, it gives me the grabs. But I understand this is just how Rowan likes the patterns. Some people do prefer to read it that way. For me personally, I prefer a schematic like this or charted out like this. So I hope you found that useful. My mum came over and we had a little knit night. She's helping me finish my son's beanie while I'm working on the lira. And the next day, I started to seam the shoulders and the sides because I had finished both the front pieces and the back piece. I started to watch um, the movie on Netflix called Scoop. It's about Prince Andrew and his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. It's so interesting. I know it's been dramatized, but honestly, how he's so out of touch is absolutely ridiculous. So all the pieces are now seamed. The next step would be to pick up stitches around the collar and the neckline. And I've made the mistake before of um, having very loose rib and then having the collar look really drab. So I'm now going to measure what the actual neckline is before I figure out the number of stitches I need for the rib. That way I can pick up the right number of stitches and hopefully get a beautiful ribbing around the neckline this time. Uh oh. Mom came over and she is not happy with how I seamed it and here she is taking apart my shoulder seaming so she can redo it. She's a little bit fussy about hand stitching. I'm on the last couple of rows of the Lyra cardigan. Almost done. I'm just doing the front ribbing and this is my last row. After this, I will be casting off. And there is, I have this much yarn left. It's probably not enough for cast off. So I have to go into a new ball. So in total, it's going to be just under four skeins. The pattern called for five. And it's just about four. Last night, mom came over and of course gave her very honest opinion again. She didn't like how I seamed the pieces together, so she unpicked it and re-seamed it for me. And she also helped me figure out the ribbing, the stitch count for the ribbing. It's like, um, you know, I spent so much time yesterday measuring, counting, trying to figure out why doesn't the ribbing number add up. You know, should I follow the pattern or should I... Um, calculate my own ribbing. My ribbing tension, I guess, is a little bit looser than most patterns have called for. So in the past, every time um, I do a picked up ribbing neckline, it's always too loose and it drags the cardigan down and it just looks awful. So this time I thought I will measure my ribbing from, you know, the bottom of the cardigan 
and I'll measure the neckline of the cardigan and I'll calculate how much I need. But you know, it's very cinched in. When I was measuring it yesterday, the top of the rib to the bottom of the rib is such a different measurement and I was getting myself very confused. And then I was looking at the pattern. It was, it said to only pick up like 204 stitches. That is about a whole third less than what I calculated. So how does that work? Does that mean if I follow this, there wasn't going to be enough stitches for the ribbing, it was going to be all bunched up. So I left it, of course, and I started on another project. And one mum came over, I asked her, and when she explained it, you know, sometimes when you are stuck in your own head and someone else come and explain it, it's so easy and so clear. And that's what mum does for me all the time. She said, firstly, if I'm going to measure the ribbing, do, do it from the back, not from the front, because there's a lot more, you know, it sits a lot more flat and you can use that to get gauge the measurement. Of course, I was using the front, which was only a little piece. And then she said, that was 25 stitches. Um, just measure your neckline. And when she measured again, it was very easy. She said, try and follow the curve, just do a straight neckline measurement. Um, and we calculated the numbers of stitches required to get what I wanted, but it was still not the right number. It was way more than what the pattern called for. So I still couldn't understand why, why I was doing that. And then, do you know what I did? It says here, continued on next page. And at the bottom, there's a little bit more here on the, of the pattern. And he says, after you pick up, in row one, you actually increase almost every third stitch. And that's what I missed. The whole time, all of yesterday, I was frustrated, couldn't work it out because I didn't read here, increasing next step. Now that I figured it out, what I did was I picked up um, the suggested number of stitches to the pattern. It's a very loose gauge kind of cardigan that just ain't enough holes to pick up the number of stitches required. That's why they asked you to increase on row one. So I just followed the pattern, picked up what they said, uh, which was 200 six in total and then I increased it to the number that I wanted which was 236 not 272 because my ribbing is so loose so I just increased differently to what the book said I have a feeling it's going to be okay so it better be because I'm already on the last row and then I'll be able to cast this off once I cast off the ribbing um, I'll probably wash and block them like this. I've still got the two sleeves here. I haven't sewn the mum because of course mum, if I do, mum's going to complain that my sewing is not very good. You'd think that hanging around the tailoring shop and running the business for 15 years, I'll be good at hand sewing, but I am not. I am terrible and seaming is one of my biggest weaknesses. I think it looks okay when I do it, but mum, she will not tolerate my my seaming, so she will always come unpick it and do it again. So I'll just block it and then she can help me seam it so we can save that argument. Um, yeah, the top is super easy to knit. The pattern, of course, as I mentioned, was a little bit frustrating and really it shouldn't have taken me more than a few days or even a week to knit this up, but it has taken me almost two weeks now. That's because I keep just getting distracted my creative juices are flowing like crazy and I just want to cast on everything. So I'm currently knitting one, two, three other projects and they're all color work because I just feel like a lot of colors at the moment. So I'm working on three other colorful projects at the same time. That's why this gray thing is not getting the attention that it needs. Um, oh, I'll show you. This thing uh, I finished last week, another distraction. I used some of my scrap yarn and just made a little baggy bucket thing to put some yarn in. So this could be, you know, perfect for a little project. I've made a rectangular base so it will sit on the table. I'll just flip it out a little bit and put my yarn balls in here. And then when I want to go out, just put my phone wallet in and then check it out with me. I've had all these scraps for ages. None of these are my colors, but together it seemed to work okay. The yellow is some leftover yarn from mum. One mum bought it from Japan 30 years ago. 
the green the green is from a jumper that I made for my son which he never wore on the waist and the blue is a Ella's Starmore um, Hebridean 3 ply again leftover from another project so yeah another basket that I'll get to use um, and this one here is a really cute thing which I have a separate vlog on and I'll tell you about it when I finish and then of course my scrappy blanket which I've started and it's taking a lot of my attention because um, I get to create different color combinations which is quite interesting anyway so let me concentrate to finish this ribbing and block it my uh, mom's already texted me I can see on my phone she can help me seam it and I'll be able to show you tomorrow Look at this perfect length. Good thing I actually took the time to measure my ribbing and picked up the right number of stitches. Because usually I don't do that, I just follow the pattern so I can get the product done as soon as I can. But this time, I did it properly and I didn't do the number set on the pattern. I did it according to my own gauge and it looks perfect. There is no drag on this ribbing like most of my jumpers. All of my previous cardigans, there's always drag because my ribbing is so loose. It always ends up being too long like that. But this one, this one is perfect. Very happy. It's not bunched up. It's not stretched out. It's just the right amount. Yay! So now I'm going to go and give it a steam block. And um, should I try and seam it or wait for mum? I'll probably just wait for mum. Save the argument, she'll come and say I did it badly and make me redo it or she'll do it for me. So I might as well wait for her to do it. I have to get some buttons for the Lyra cardigan, but everything here is so ugly. I miss when I was in Germany, in Europe, and all the craft stores had beautiful buttons. But these are uh, just cheap looking plastic stuff. Ah, oh, I've just finished sewing the last button on my Lyra cardigan. I've got a spare button here, so this is what I ended up going with. It's just a pretty plain black grey button with a little bit of grey marbling. It fits this fabric really well, I think. Just very plain, because it's such a simple, elegant cardigan, I didn't want something to, you know, really distract from the simple design. Um, Mum has helped me sew the sleeves on. Being a tailor, she had very high expectations and she always helps me seam, seam. She always helps me do the seaming, especially the sleeves. I have tried to seam it myself many times and she always says it's no good and she'll take it apart and do it again. So I just let her do it now. Um, there's a real art to seaming, I think. She says, you know, you've got to gather a bit more here, make this part tighter. I can't remember what she said. But every time she does do it, for me, she complains about my tension. She said, look, it's so messy there. You can't stop there too tight. Yeah, very high expectations. But it's good every time I learn something. For example, she said this time, uh, when I did the three-stitch cast off another armhole, I did it too tight. So it was really hard to um, sew it together and make it sit nicely. So she ended up redoing that little bit there. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with it. I just tried it on and it was so hot. So I might have to wait for the sun to go down a little bit more before I try it on again to take more photos. Uh, it's just such a beautiful yarn. I weighed it before. The whole thing is less than 100 grams. Seriously. It's nearly nothing. And it's just a really cute, versatile cardigan I can throw on any time. Spring, autumn, you know, evening with a little dress or something. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. And I think knitting pieces really works well with this loose gauge as well because the seaming gives it a bit more structure. Otherwise, it may just be a little bit more wishy-washy and, you know, dropped, too, too dropped on the shoulders and the seam wouldn't have that nice straight line. Uh, you know, if you knit back and forth, I don't think I'll be able to give it such a nice shape, especially the shoulders too. Having a seam will really hold that shoulder so it doesn't overstretch and drop over time. Um, another thing I do like about knitting pieces, occasionally, not all the time, is that it's really light. You know, this is five pieces, and each piece only took me a couple of hours, if you can lose gauge. But each piece, it just felt really quick, and it's not heavy on the hands. So when you have a full garment, you 
knitting them around, you have to turn the whole thing constantly, and you're holding the whole garment on your needles, it can be very heavy. And this was so light on the hands, and just gives your wrists, wrists a good break. Yeah, I'm happy. When the sun goes down, cool down a couple of degrees, I'll try it on and take a video for you. Um, these buttons I got from Lincraft. In Brisbane, there are not many choices to buy accessories, haberdashery. We've got Lincraft and we have Spotlight. That's about it. Um, and they are, you know, your budget-friendly everyday shops, but there's nothing nice in there. I've ordered buttons online before on Etsy. One time I was disappointed at the quality, another time it just disappeared in the post because it was a few buttons, maybe using a little envelope, and they just lost it. Um, it was 20 something dollars and the seller was pretty unhappy as well because she's lost that money that she had to refund me. Um, oh, there is a luxury fabric shop in the valley. They do sell buttons, but they are not cheap. When we have the tailoring business, mum and I will go there quite often to look at fabrics and accessories and trimmings. I remember buying beautiful trimmings to add to the dresses we would make and they they're often like $100, $200 a meter just for a little a strip of beautiful diamante trimming, things like that. But you know, they are European fabric, European design, high quality, definitely worth money. Um, I'll probably save it for special occasions only. And I'm not going to drive all the way to the city to buy buttons. So yeah, otherwise I'm really happy with this.